Hey guys, it's Mr. Peters again coming to you from my garage. This video is going to be adding and subtracting positive rational numbers. I'm going to give you a warning that it is a nice, beautiful, sunny day out today and people are out mowing their lawns and there are cars driving by. So if you hear some extra noise, please try to ignore that the best you can. We're going to start off with adding positive rational numbers. These are two whole numbers. As you can see, both numbers have a different number of digits in each number. What I need to decide is I need to decide which number is the largest. The largest number is 2,375. The smaller number is 639. I want you to notice when I lined up these two numbers for addition, I lined them up by place value. Now I can go ahead and start adding. 5 plus 9 is 14. I carry the 1. 7 plus 3 is 10, plus 1 is 11. I carry the other 1. I'm carrying these 1s over to the next place value because the largest digit I can have in any place value is 9. 6 plus 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. I carry it again. 2 plus 1 is 3. So the sum of 2,375 and 639 is 3,014. Now we're going to take these same two numbers and we're going to subtract them. Just like with addition, we put the bigger number on top and then we start subtracting from the smallest place value which is the one's place value. So here I have five minus nine. I cannot subtract this number because five is smaller than nine. So therefore I go next door to the seven and borrow one from it. That's gonna turn my five into a 15. 15 minus nine is six. Six minus three is three. Three minus six. Once again, I cannot do that because the three is smaller than the six. So I borrow one from the two and make the three a 13. 13 minus six is seven. One minus zero is one. Therefore, the difference. Ooh, I forgot to change that to subtraction. In your example, in your notes, please make sure you change that to subtraction. The difference between 2,375 and 639 is 1,736. Now let's take a look at how to add and subtract decimals. When I am adding or subtracting decimals, I will always line up the decimal. Let me say that one more time. I will line up the decimal. I will pick the number that is of greatest value and I will put that number on top. The two numbers I have are 13 and 75 hundredths plus 9 and 263 thousandths. 13 is bigger than 9, so therefore 13 will go on top. When I add, I'm going to make sure that I add the decimal right there, and then I will fill in my 9, and then 2, 6, 3. That way I know my decimals are lined up. As you can see here and here, we have some empty spaces. With those empty spaces, we must put in zeros. We're going to start with the smallest place value, which is the hundredths place value, and we'll add that. 0 plus 3 is 3, 5 plus 6 is 11, carry my 1, 7 plus 2 is 9, plus 1 is 10, carry my 1 again, I will bring my decimal straight down, 3 plus 9 is 12, plus 1 is 13, I will carry another 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, plus 1 is 2. Therefore, the sum of 13 and 75 hundredths and 9 and 263 thousandths is 23 and 13 thousandths. 
let's check out how we would subtract these two decimals. Because I've already added these two numbers, I know that 13 and 75 hundredths is the bigger number. So I put that on top. I want you to notice that I have lined up my decimals and I can go ahead and drop my decimal. I have missing spaces, just like with addition, I'm going to add zeros. I start with the smallest place value when I'm subtracting, and it's right here at the hundredths place value, zero minus three. I cannot do this because the zero is smaller than the three. So I will borrow from the five, making it a four. That turns the zero into ten. Ten minus three is seven. Then I have four minus six. Uh-oh, we have another problem. Four is less than six. So I have to borrow from my neighbor, which is a seven. I'll turn the seven into six. The four gets turned into 14. 14 minus six is eight. Six minus two is four. Three minus nine, as you notice, I brought my decimal down. 3 minus 9, I cannot do that. I'm going to borrow from my neighbor the 1 and make it a 0 and turn the 3 into a 13. 13 minus 9 is 4. And 0 minus 0 is 0. So therefore, the difference of 13 and 75 hundredths minus 9 and 263 thousandths is 4 and 487 thousandths. Now let's take a look at adding mixed fractions and regular fractions. As you can see, I have my mixed fractions here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my whole numbers. I'm going to box my whole number so I remember as I'm looking back at my work, I can remember to go ahead and put the 5 in front of my fraction. Then I will have 2 thirds plus 1 fourth. I can use the LCD method or I can use the shoelace method, which we taught throughout the year. To save us a little bit of time, I'm going to go ahead and use the shoelace method. So let me set my shoelace up. Three times one, four times two, three times four. Three times one is three, four times two is eight, 3 times 4 is 12. 3 plus 8 is 11. My denominator stays 12. And then I remember and I put my 5 in front of my fraction. And that's how I solve adding mixed fractions. Let's take a look at what I would do if I was subtracting the mixed fractions. As you can see, I have changed the problem to subtraction. I will pull out my whole numbers first. I will pull out the bigger whole number first, so that way it's easier for me to subtract. Get rid of those whole numbers. I box the answer of the subtraction of my two whole numbers. Three minus two is one. Then I will set up my fraction, and I will go ahead and set this up utilizing shoelace. The only difference in when I'm setting it is up is that I have changed the operation from addition to subtraction. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. 3 times 1, 4 times 2, 3 times 4. So there I get 3 times 1 is 3, 4 times 2 is 8, and that's 12. 8 minus 3 is 5, 
12 stays my denominator and I put a one in front of it. And that is how I subtract mixed fractions. Let's take a look at how to add and subtract regular fractions. So you can see here I have three fifths plus one half. I'm going to go ahead and as I did with all the other problems, I have no whole numbers to worry about. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my shoelace. I will start here with the five, five times one, two times three, five times two on the bottom. Five times one is five. I bring my operation up. Two times three is six. Five times two is 10. Five plus six is 11 and 10 stays the same. But I have a problem. 11 tenths is an improper fraction. Remember from when we did multiplying fractions, in order to solve this, I have to divide the denominator into the numerator. So I will divide 10 into 11. I know that 10 can go in one time with a remainder of one. So this one, the first one in the problem is my whole number. The second one is my numerator. 10 is my denominator. Remember, 10 is my denominator because denominators never change. So I can go ahead and put my 10 as a denominator, my numerator is one, and my whole number is one. Remember, whatever the remainder is, that's gonna leave me with my numerator. The remainder is the numerator, if you have to convert it from improper to proper. You will not have to convert every problem from, proper to in, from improper to proper. Let's take a look at what this would look like if I was subtracting. So you can see I have 3 fifths minus 1 half. I'm gonna go ahead and use my shoelace method. The only thing that'll change is the operation will be changed to subtraction. I will keep everything else the same. Five and one, two and three, and five and two. Five times one is five. Bring my operation up. Two times three is six. Five times two is 10. 6 minus 5 is 1. My denominator stays as 10. You notice that is a proper fraction, so I don't need to do any further conversions. It's in its lowest form, so I don't have to simplify. Therefore, I'm done. Remember, if you had forgotten the rules of simplification, I am going to attach a copy of the math study sheet that has the simplifying rules on it. While you're doing your fraction work, Please keep note of that so that you do not get answers wrong. One last thing I would like to show you is the benchmark fractions. Here are your three benchmark fractions, one fourth, one half, and three fourths. Remember, we discussed earlier in the year that one fourths is also 25 hundredths. One half is also decimal five or decimal five zero. Three fourths is decimal seven five. You will have problems where you will have one of these decimals and a fraction. You must convert the fraction, the decimal into a fraction. This is also on your math study sheet. Remember, Jaguars, if you need any help at any time, please feel free to contact me. If you're starting to get overwhelmed, remember, take a brain break, relax, breathe. This is work that we already know what to do and how to do it. Today's secret word is Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Thank you for watching the video, Jaguars, and good luck with your assignments for the week.